Welcome back, folks. Howdy. I'm Pastor Matt. Here to read Little Pilgrim's Progress to you once again. Anyways, the last time we were together, we talked about how little Christian and his buddy Hopeful, well, they got lost because they took the wrong path. But guess what? Something bad's going to happen to them. That's what happens. Let's see what happens. Would you join me? Thanks. Chapter 34 Seized by the Giant The storm passed away before daybreak and the sun rose in a clear sky and shone brightly over the way of the king. Christian and Hopeful were lying under the shadow of the fence and did not feel the warmth of sunbeams. So instead of making their way back to the stile in the early morning as they had intended to do, they slept soundly and knew nothing of the danger that was close at hand. Giant Despair had heard the storm raging, and he came down from his castle soon after sunrise and walked through his fields and meadows to see if any harm had been done by the wind and rain. Last of all, he crossed Bypath Meadow, and on his way home, he passed by the very spot where the little pilgrims were sleeping. Hopeful's dress, which had once been white and new, had become soiled and shabby while he stayed in Vanity Fair, but Christian's armor still looked bright, although it was sadly splashed with mud, through which he had walked the night before. The giant caught sight of his shining helmet among the bushes by the fence, and he turned at once to see who was lying there. <laughs> they are pilgrims of the king, he said to himself, and he smiled to think that they were in his power. A loud voice roused Christian from his dreams, and when he opened his eyes, he saw the giant stooping over him. Despair was a terrible-looking man with shaggy hair and a beard, and clothes made of the rough skins of wild beasts. Christian cried out with fear when he saw him, and this roused Hopeful, who sprang up trembling. What are you doing here? We are pilgrims answered Christian, whose lips were quivering with fear so that he could scarcely speak. And we have lost our way. You have no right to sleep in me meadow, said the giant, and his voice was so harsh and deep that the boys were more scared by it than they had been by the storm. I should take you back with me to my castle, and we'll see what we'll do with you. The poor little pilgrims knew that they were quite helpless. If they had tried to run away, this great strong man would have overtaken them in a moment. He drove them before him and cr across the field to his house, which was called Doubting Castle, and put them into a dark dungeon, locking the door behind him. All day and all night they lay there upon the bare ground, without either food or water, and not even able to see each other. Hopeful crept close to the wall, Dear Christian, and they clung together, wondering whether the giant would soon come to, and put them to death. Christian's heart was very full of grief, as he felt that he had caused all this trouble, and now he feared that the giant would kill them both, and that they would never reach the celestial city. Giant Despair had a wife, whose name was Diffidence. He told her that he had found two little pilgrims sleeping in his meadow, and that he had brought them home and locked them up in one of his dungeons. Diffidence was very pleased to hear this, and being a cruel woman, she said that she hoped her husband would beat his little prisoners. So in the morning, the giant took his club and went down to the dungeon. When he had beaten the boys, he left them again in the darkness, and they were so bruised by the heavy blows that they could not move but lay upon the ground all that day, moaning with pain. The next day, Despair visited them again and seemed surprised to find that they were not dead. He told them that he would never let them leave his castle, but that if they did not wish to die for want of food, they might drink some poison that he would leave with them. Then Christian begged him to have mercy upon them and set them free, and this made the giant so angry that he rushed upon them with his club and would have killed them, but his strength suddenly failed, and he was obliged to leave them for, for that item. In the bright weather, he often had fits of weakness and lost the use of his hands, so that sometimes the pilgrims whom he carried into his castle were able to escape from him. 
Christian did not know this, and he began to think that it was now foolish to hope for deliverance. What shall we do if we are to stay here until we die? Will it not be better to drink this poison than to die slowly for want of food? Uh, I am sure we must not do that. If we were to kill ourselves and angels, the angels would never come to take us to the celestial city. They only come when the king sends them. Perhaps if the giant is ill again, he may forget to lock the door, and we may be able to slip out before his strength comes back. Let us wait a little longer, and the king may show us a way to escape. Uh, chapter 35, The Key of Promise. In the evening, the giant came down into the dungeon again, hoping to find that the poor little prisoners were dead, but they were not. They were very weak and very faint. However, they were still alive, and they had not touched the poison that he had left with them. This made despair very angry, and he frightened the little children so much with his terrible looks and words that the little Christian fainted quite away. When his senses returned, the giant was gone, and only Hopeful sat by, trying to rub Christian's hands to keep him warm. Oh, I think we shall have to take the poison. It is a dreadful here. We cannot bear it much longer, and we shall never be able to escape. You must not talk in that way. You are forgetting all that has happened to you before. Just remember what a long way you have traveled and how many dangers you have been in. You are not afraid to fight with self, and the king helped you to conquer him. You passed safely through the dark valley, and, in, and even in Vanity Fair, the king did not let you be killed. Let us trust in him and wait a little longer. Now the giant and his wife knew that the pilgrims who killed themselves never went to the celestial city. But if despair killed them, the king always sent his angels to carry them away. So when Diffidence heard that the children were still alive, she was no less angry than her husband. You had better take them into the courtyard tomorrow, she said, and let them see the bones of the pilgrims who have died before here. Then perhaps they will be scared enough and will drink the poison. The giant thought that this would be a good plan, and in the morning he brought Christian and Hopeful out of the dungeon and led them into the courtyard, which was strewn all over with bones of men and women, and even little children. It was a very dreadful sight, and the giant was pleased to see how scared his little prisoners looked. <laughs> These are the bones of the pilgrims. They came into my meadows as you did, and I brought them into my castle and killed them in a few days. I shall put you both to death like that, and your bones shall lie here like the rest. Then he beat them once more, and they laid all day in their dark prison, crying together and wondering whether their troubles would even would ever come to an end. The same night when Despair was talk talking to his wife, he said that he could not remember how it was that these two little boys were so very brave. Perhaps they think that someone will come to save them, or they may have a key hidden in their clothes, with which they will open the doors or when we are not watching. You have lost prisoners in that way many times. This was quite true, but the giant thought that if Christian had had one of the king's keys with him, he would he would have used it before. But I was such them both in the morning, he said, and then he fell asleep. The little key, which was called the key of promise, lay in Christian's pocket. It had been given to him at the palace beautiful, if you recall, but in his trouble he had forgotten all about it. Neither he nor Hopeful could sleep that night, and after talking together for some time, they began to pray to the king and beg him very earnestly to help them. He will hear us, though we cannot see him, and I am beginning to feel as if we should escape, escape after all. The king did hear the little pilgrim's prayer, as he always does, and he sent one of his bright angels to tell them what to do. They did not see the angel, but a thought came suddenly into Christian's mind, and that thought was really the whisper of the king's bright messenger. Oh, how stupid I've been. We have stayed here all these days when we might have gone away at once. Discretion gave me a little key. I believe it will open every one of the giant's locks. Hopeful sprang up. Let us try it. It must still be night and no doubt despair is asleep. They 
felt carefully in the darkness until they found the lock, the dungeon, and Christian put the key into it. It turned quite easily, and with a click, the door unlocked. With beating hearts, the boys stepped softly over the threshold and listened. A dim light shone down the passage, and they soon found their way to the door that led into the courtyard. This Christian opened also, and not daring even to whisper, Hopeful followed him across the pavement. The moon was shining brightly, and only one more door stood between the little pilgrims and the green meadow. But this last lock was very stiff, and although Christian tried with all his might, he could not turn the key. Then the giant's step sounded upon the castle stairs, for he had heard something move, someone moving. The little pilgrims thought that he would overtake them, and they were ready to faint with fear. But just as despair reached the doorway, his club dropped from his hand, and he fell heavily upon the ground. Oh, do try harder, and we shall go away before his fit is over. I am trying, but the lock is rusty. Hopeful put his hands also upon the key. It's moving, he said, struggling. And in another moment, the lock gave way. The giant still lay upon the ground, and the boys hastily pulled back the heavy bolts and opened the door. Then Hopeful seized Christian's hand, and they ran as fast as they could across the broad meadow toward the stile that led into the way of the king. Uh, chapter 36, The Delectable Mountains. Oh, exclaimed Christian when at last the boys found themselves once more on the way of the king. How glad I am that discretion gave me this key. Praise the Lord, praise the king. Yes, what should we have done without it? They sat down together upon the roadside, for they were out of breath by running. They were not afraid to rest there for they felt sure that despair would not follow them into the king's way. Oh, it is a pity that pilgrims do not know where that path will lead them. Could we not write something upon a stone and set it up near the stile? We might try. I can cut some letters if we can find a stone. They looked up, they looked up and down, and presently they found a large, smooth block of stone lying in the grass. Well, this will do very well, and you can cut the letters first, and, and then I think we can push it into the right place. So Hopeful drew out his knife, and after consulting together, they carved these words upon the stone. This path leads to Doubting Castle, which belongs to Giant Despair. He is the king's enemy, and he tries to kill the pilgrims. Hopeful was some time over his task, but at last it was finished. And before the moon went down, the stone was pushed across the grass and placed close to the stile which is the fence, so that no one could pass by without seeing it. It will perhaps save someone. It was a good thing that you thought of it. The short summer night was soon over, and the sun rose behind the hills. The little pilgrims walked on quietly, enjoying the light and the fresh air very much after spending those terrible days and nights in the dungeon. Oh, what beautiful hills those are, and the way of the king leads over them. I think they must be the delectable mountains replied Christian. I saw them far away, and when I was at the Palace Beautiful, I believe some shepherds live there who are kind to the pilgrims. Perhaps they will give us some food and let us rest a little. Very soon the children came close to the mountains and began to climb the pathway that led across them. It was not steep and rugged like that upon the hill of difficulty. It was smooth and easy, and the slopes on each side of it were planted with vines. Little streams of pure water speckled uh, in the grass, and trees laden with fruit grew here, and there was spreading boughs that hung over the king, uh, the way of the king, and it screened the pilgrims from the heat of the sun. Christian and Hopeful were very hungry and thirsty also, and they were glad to eat some of the fruit and take a draught of the cool, clear water, which is a drink. The shepherds were not far from the path, and when they saw the boys coming, four of their number went down the green slope to meet them. Are these the delectable mountains? Yes. Well, this country is called Emmanuel's Land. It belongs to the prince, and it is in sight of the king's city. These sheep are his, and we live upon the mountains to take care of them. Is it very far to the celestial city? And is the way safe? No, it is safe for those who love the king. The pilgrims who do not serve him faithfully often fall into danger. 
Is there any place where... Is there any place here where pilgrims may rest? No, oh, we... Uh, we are both so very tired. Oh, yes. The king has commanded us to do all that we can for any of his servants who pass over the mountains. Come to our tents and we will take good care of you. So the shepherds whose names were knowledge, experience, watchful, and sincere, led the children to their tents and brought them water to wash in and gave them plenty of wholesome food. Then seeing how tired they were, watchful prepared beds for them, where they slept comfortably and awoke early in the morning, uh, feeling refreshed and strengthened. Well, that's it for this week, boys and girls. Guess what? I want you to spend some time with your parents and talk about some things that little Christian Hopeful went through this week. For example, who was that giant despair? And what in the world was his wife's name? It's a weird name, but guess what? It means something. So I want you guys to think about it, pray about it, and then <clears throat> talk about with your parents what the key to their success was in getting away. And then what the delectable mountains represented. Maybe who those four shepherds were. They each had interesting names, didn't they? Anyway, God loves you. Jesus loves you. Remember, always be faithful to the, to the son of the king. And you will not be led astray. Amen? Oh, yeah. All right. I'll see you next, next time. Have a great week. Blessings to you. Y'all ready for this?